So you want to know how to outline a passage of scripture Well, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to be breaking down in detail how I outline a passage, and I hope that it's going to be something that you can take and use in your Bible study. How's it going, everyone? My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I am a Presbyterian pastor in the North Hills of Pittsburgh. Thank you for clicking on this video today because that means you're interested in learning more in your Bible study time, and I think that's fantastic. So I'm here to help you. So when we outline a passage, the main purpose, the main goal of this outline is to talk about the theme and the context of what we're looking at. So if we get the understanding of the context, we can come to a good conclusion about what the big idea, the big theme is of this section. This is where study Bibles come in really huge. This is where even the bold headings that are already there in your Bibles may be a big help as you're thinking and looking at what is the main theme, the main purpose, the big idea of this passage. So how do you begin? You have to read the passage, read it, reread it, read it again, read the verses that come before it, read the verses that come after it. This isn't just, I'm going to read for my devotional time and and get some encouragement. You are studying scripture and trying to dig into what does the text actually mean? This is going to take some time. So listen to the scripture, read the passage, get acquainted with the passage that you're looking at. No matter how long or short it might be, it might be a whole chapter, might be a chunk of a chapter, whatever it is, you need to get into that text because just reading it once through isn't enough. Once you've read it through and you've gotten some thoughts and you're getting an idea of the context and the theme, this is where you're going to summarize the passage in your own words so that you can help whittle down to this big idea. So the first step that I do to summarize and write this in my own words is I write down some of those key themes or ideas that I see reoccurring or that I see as part of the passage. Here in James 1, I wrote perseverance, wisdom, doubting, fading, temptation, good gifts, the law, doing. These are all parts of what this chapter 1 of James is about. And so if I were to put that into a summary statement of what James 1 says, it might say something like this. James is talking here about persevering through trials, and it's the wise Christian who perseveres. And anyone who is lacking that wisdom can go to God to receive because God is the one who gives us good things. He isn't the one who tempts us, but instead is the one who provides for us. And he's given us his word as provision. And so now we as Christians, we do that word. We live out that word. Now you'll notice I did use some of the words that happen to be in the text. I used some of the language that might be coming from the text. I put it in my own words. Did I encompass everything in that? No, I'm saying here's what appears to be the big movements of this passage. That then brings us all back to what is the underlying main purpose of this passage. It's talking about this perseverance and everything is kind of tied back to this perseverance or what the outcome of that perseverance looks like. And so the the main theme that I gave this passage is pain isn't pointless. Now with that main theme, how do you then build out some of these sub themes? Now this is where my Bible, particularly I'm using the LSB, the legacy standard Bible. I got it uh, from my buddy, John Adams. Uh, I was lucky enough, or uh, we shouldn't say lucky, uh, in God's great providence, decided uh, that I would win the giveaway, and I won this Bible in a giveaway, and I've been using it, and I've been waiting to think about how should I use this Bible? Am I going to write in this Bible? Am I going to mark this Bible up? It's really nice. And then I came across this study method, and I've been just loving how this Bible pairs with that study method. Why? I have a single column here, and there's no other distractions. I can still go to study Bibles, like my ESV Reformation study Bible here, or my CSB Spurgeon study Bible. Those are all resources that I use on the regular, but to write down my outline, I love this Bible. So then how do you come to these subheadings? Well, even in some of my summary, I I saw some of those subheadings 
emerging. And in the text here, there's some cues, and in your Bible it might be the same, where there's an extra space in this text. There's a bold number. You could see 2 is bolded, 9 is bolded, 12, 19, 26 kind of gives this key idea, understanding that it might be a change of thought. There's something different here. You might see an extra space in your Bible marking that. Now, that doesn't mean that that's where every outline structure breaks, but it gives you some hints as to where it might. We're almost done with the outline. You're like, we haven't written anything down yet, but listen, what have we done? We've gone through the context and read the passage. You have written the passage out in your own words. Then from that, you've been able to pull out that big main theme, the big idea that kind of umbrellas over this section of text. Now, go back to that summary that you wrote. There might be some sub-themes or look at your text. Where do these sub-themes start to clump together? Again, the purpose here isn't to have a perfect one-for-one outline, but to give you a 30,000-foot view of this text so that you might be able to quickly call and remember, what is James 1 about? Oh, it's about these things. Is it about more things too? Yeah, but it's about these things and you're going to be able to memorize that a lot easier. So here is the breakdown for me in James chapter one. Verse one sits on its own. It's an introduction. It has a purpose. It has some meaning in it, but it's really its own thing. Then we have verses two through eight, lacking in wisdom. Verses nine through 12, everything fades. Verses 13 to 18, good gifts. And verse 19 through 27, the rest of the chapter, doers follow the law. That's an outline. That's an outline. That's taking the big idea, the summary points, the sub points, and putting them in and breaking them down. Now you're ready for the next step. You're ready to get to some of that deeper meaning. Now I want to talk about some of the resources that I use that I think might be helpful for you when making an outline. I already mentioned some study Bibles. Study Bibles can be a great resource, particularly on getting to some of those main ideas, those main themes, getting the context of the book that you're reading. And if it's a study Bible like the CSB Spurgeon study Bible, you get to read some of these sermons and and excerpts from sermons on these passages, which can give you some great language to use as you're trying to come upon these descriptions. Oftentimes, I will also use the Enduring Word Bible Commentary. It's an online Bible commentary because I really enjoy the way that they outline a text. Their outline is far more detailed than what you're going to be doing in your Bible. However, it gets to that idea of helping organize some of these thoughts And it gives some quotes from other theologians and some other things that, again, can start to build this understanding. Those are two of the resources I would encourage you to start using. And if there's something that you've been using that you love with your Bibles, tell me about it down in the comments below. Now, with all of that said, you are ready to start outlining the Bible for yourself. I'm so thankful that you made it all the way here to the end of the video, and I hope and pray that you feel confident and excited to open up your scriptures and to start marking them up and start memorizing and remembering and retaining the Word of God in an organized way. It also means you're ready to jump to the next step in making comments based on that outline you've made, you can click on the playlist right here that'll bring you there. Don't forget to hit that like button. I thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one. Remember, faithfulness is pursued together. Peace.